let's get on with the interview. First of all, what's it like being back in Sunderland? It's always fabulous. I know people will tell you that, but Sunderland to me, every time I do a tour, every time I've got a great show that I want to show to people, it always comes here. I think mainly, I suppose, because I suppose it's a little bit daft, this, but I always walk onto this stage on the first day of rehearsal when it's empty and the theatre's empty, and I always talk to it because this theatre is the first place that I ever wor worked on a professional stage. I'd never been on a stage before I walked onto the stage at the Sunderland Empire. I'd never had an audience until I walked onto the stage at the Sunderland Empire on the 5th of November 1956. And I always remember. So I always come here with a new show because it's like saying hello to my friends because they started me off. And I think that if, if the show that I did here in 1956 had been a disaster, I probably would never have walked on a stage again. But it was because of that wonderful welcome I got from kids, because teenagers had never been to the theatre before. It was rock and roll, you know. So this was your make or break theatre? Yeah. I didn't realise it at the time. I mean, I was 19 and I thought, well, you know, this is what you do. You walk on this stage and there's the people sit out there and you play your guitar and you sing your songs and you go home. You know, and, and it'll all be over in a week. But it wasn't. But just think, the whole history of rock and roll in this country could have been different started if you'd here. gone down the pan here. Yeah, British rock and roll started on this stage, in this theatre. There had never been a live rock and roll concert until the Sunderland Empire 1950. I feel a new plaque coming yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're missing teacher. a trick, It's going to say, that teacher. <laughs> <laughs> now look what you've now done. Now look what you've done. <laughs> so you're back here, and um, you're here for half term playing... Scrooge. Yeah. Now, come on, Tommy. You are known for being a cheeky, chappy yeah, Cockney with I the know. biggest grin showbiz has ever seen. Well, How can you be Scrooge? I'm a crotchety old sod in this. I start as a crotchety old sod, and as the, the crotchiness starts to go a little bit, as he starts to learn about his life, he suddenly becomes. Well, in truth, on Tommy, still in the last half an hour, you know, he becomes a human being. But he starts off, as I say, as this. Real nasty person, but I love it. He's lovely. He's lovely, really. I mean, we have a little chat together before I go on, and I say, "Don't you be too naughty tonight?" And the mirror talks back and says, "Oh yes, I will." <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll delve strange, into what's going on yeah. in your mind, yeah, Tommy. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sensing that you're channeling some inner darkness. Oh yes, it's always been there, you know. Ah, oh, the yeah. Tommy Steele that we're not aware of. Yeah, yeah. And you, you see him here. I must say, they get a shot when I walk on the stage. I, I mean, bet they do. They go, oh, "No, it's not him." When I was at the Palladium. Doing this show a couple of years ago, uh, there was a big uh, coach party in, you know, about 50 or 60 people together. And apparently, I wasn't there, of course, the interval came, the first half, and some woman shouted down four rows to her husband, What do you think of it? And he shouted back, It's terrific. When's Tommy Steele coming on? Oh. He didn't even know it was me. Well, at least he didn't go rubbish. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't have told me that if that had happened. <laughs> so um, your career is just mind-blowing. You were the first ever rock and roll star that Britain ever produced. Yeah. And people sometimes forget that because obviously we've had Cliff Richard and other people like that. But y it was you. You were the first. Yeah. Um, and now, <clears throat> many years later, we won't go into how many, you're still doing it. And... You know, going on tour in a musical is mm. gruelling for even, you know, the youngsters, the 20-year-olds. Yeah. How are you doing it? Because they're great musicals. You go on tour with great musicals. Half a sixpence, Seen in the Rain, Hans Anderson. When you've got a great musical in your hands, you want to go take it out and play it to people. I mean, the theatre is not in London. The theatre's everywhere. Everywhere you go, look at this theatre. Sunderland Empire, one of the greatest theatres in Great Britain, probably in Europe. It is a Matcham built theatre. It is beautiful. People come in and you show them a great musical. I'm not going to sit back home in London and say I'm only going to keep it down south. I'm going to take it around and show it to people. I'm, I'm a show off. Look what I've got. Isn't it good? But mm. you know, don't you want to just no, take it easy now? Don't even before you say it. <laughs> no. I'm not going to retire. I'm not going to take it easy. <laughs> if, if, if When this finishes next year, I'm going to be sitting at home and I'm going to be watching some football on the television or something and I'm going to say, well, that was really nice. I'm nice and relaxed and that. I really enjoyed that. I'll probably give myself a, a couple of years. In comes another script. I look at it. Oh, I can't say no to this. I mean, I mean, they even want me to do Hans Anderson again. 
when they big, do a big production of Hans Christian Andersen. That was, that was a beautiful show. I did it here. Beautiful show. I might do that. Maybe. But you've never lost your passion. Oh, no. No, I love it. I've got the passion here. I didn't know I had it until I came to Sunderland Empire. It gave me the passion. Look what people do to you. They make you feel happy. They make you smile. They clap at you and they cheer. Who's going to... I'm not going to turn my back on that. You think I'm out of my mind? I think the Sunderland Tourist Board need to actually enlist you for their next campaign. <laughs> yeah, I'll come and do a sculpture of the Venerable Bede. How about that? That would be amazing. Yeah, They'd love be. that. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you is... Um, just quickly to talk about, you know, your illustrious past. You've worked with all mm. the greats, danced with Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, met all the stars of your day. When you look back at your career, which memories are the fondest? Oh. Is it too many? Yeah, it's too many. I think that if I had to really say, pick one, it's a memory that I shared with my mum and dad. And they were alive then, and I went to the Buckingham Palace to get the OBE from the Queen. And walking into the throne room, and knowing that my mum and dad were there, and Her Majesty was standing there too, and the band played half a sixpence. And they saw her talk to me, and um, afterwards they were gobsmacked. And out of all the wonderful things that happened to me, they shared that moment, and it was wonderful to see their eyes, and just wonderful. Wow. So um, Elvis and Jean Kelly never matched up to the Queen. <laughs> well, they never matched up to my mum and dad. Fair enough. 